If you ever wonder if torture is legal, just try the training routines of the eight most elite special forces in the world. Number eight, J.W. Grom, Poland. If you think Polacks are slow, you obviously haven't heard of J.W. Grom. The Polish Special Military Unit is one of the most formidable special forces units in the entire world. They are the ones that the U.S. calls when they have a mission behind enemy lines that they want to keep very secret and quiet. J.W. Grom specializes in stealth operations and has been involved in numerous high-profile domestic and international missions. I wouldn't be surprised if you haven't heard of J.W. Grom, as they usually operate in the shadows. They go through a vigorous, highly demanding training regiment, including escape and evasion, survival, counter-terrorism, and hostage rescue training. The toughest, however, is the combat diving training. For this exercise, a soldier must be able to hold his breath for up to two minutes in freezing water while performing various tasks and even conducting combat. Needless to say, not many people are ready to take on what is essentially torture to become one of the best combatants in the world. Moreover, they are entirely forbidden from drinking alcohol and getting into fights outside their tasks. Due to their specialized training, they are considered extremely dangerous, even without a weapon. So the Polish government made sure to keep them under control. The entire unit consists of only 1,500 members. They are armed to the teeth with highly specialized equipment, like night vision goggles, various grenades and flashbangs, breaching tools, and many more. Their weapon of choice is the Polish-made FBMSBS Modular Assault Rifle. This weapon is an all-in-one rifle, as it can use different components to customize the rifle, Accessories. The unit also has Glock 17 and Glock 19 pistols, the Heckler and Koch MP5 submachine gun, the Remington 870 shotgun, and the Beret M82 sniper rifle. JW Grom is anything but a joke. They are a highly trained specialized military force that is both deadly and stealthy. The fact that they lack the fame others on this list have is only a recognition of their excellent work as a secretive combat force operating deep behind enemy lines. Still, they have a long way to go to reach their primary opponents, the Russians. Number 7. Alpha Group. Russia. Russia's forces are a bit questionable, especially after we saw their so-called military might in the war against Ukraine. Still, we can't underestimate the best of the best in the Russian army, especially since their motto is, wherever Alpha Group appears, compromise stop. Yes, this elite special unit's primary goal is to eliminate. So naturally, their tactics usually consist of shooting everyone, then shooting some more, throwing a grenade or two, and then asking questions. This was showcased in 2002, when Chechen terrorists took over the Moscow theater. When the Alpha Group engaged, not only all the terrorists were eliminated, but over 100 of the hostages perished during the operation. Not the safest unit to save you when you're in trouble, but exceptionally highly effective when a threat needs to be eliminated. Naturally, it's definitely not an easy task to become part of this military unit. Candidates must meet specific physical, psychological, and intellectual standards, and must demonstrate exceptional skills in areas such as marksmanship, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and decision-making under pressure. They must also have a clean criminal record and be willing to undergo extensive background checks. Once selected, candidates undergo an intensive training program that covers a wide range of topics, including marksmanship, reconnaissance, hand-to-hand -hand combat, explosives, and other specialized skills. The training is designed to be physically and mentally challenging. 
In addition, it is developed to prepare candidates for the extreme conditions and high pressure situations they may face as members of the Alpha Group, along with regular training such as weightlifting, swimming, endurance, strength, close quarters combat, and other exercises. The members of this elite force undergo intense survival training like pain endurance, hunting, building shelters out of nothing, and even performing surgery on themselves. Unlike the Russian army in Ukraine, the Alpha Group is equipped with the best available weapons in Russia. Naturally, their assault rifle of choice is the AK-47, accompanied by a PKM machine gun and a Dragonov sniper rifle. While you certainly won't be happy to see the Alpha Group storming your place, at least you will see them before you inevitably get shot. That's more than can be said about the Israeli Special Forces, Sayeret Matkal. Number 6. Sayeret Matkal, Israel If the world was a game, being Israel would surely be the hardest level. Surrounded by enemies on all sides, with massive internal conflicts and a huge terrorist breeding ground in their backyard, such as Gaza, Israel is definitely not the best place to be a soldier. Naturally, the Middle Eastern state has answered the challenges of the region with Sayeret Matkal. The elite special military force was established in 1949 to ensure Israel's existence from external threats. Over the years, this highly trained unit has been involved in almost all high-profile operations of the Israel Defense Forces. IDF. These have included the famous 1976 raid on Entebbe Airport in Uganda to rescue Israeli hostages, the 1988 assassination of Abu Jihad in Tunisia, and the 2006 operation to destroy a Syrian nuclear reactor. As you can imagine, the Sayeret Matkal is not the best bunch to mess up with. They are all highly trained combatants that undergo vigorous training. It includes physical fitness, marksmanship, navigation, survival skills, specialized training in urban warfare, counter-terrorism, and hostage rescue. Unit members are also trained in foreign languages, as many operations require them to work in unfamiliar countries. The toughest training, however, is the exercises to withhold information. combat capabilities and tactics, the Sierra Matkal can't compare with the military might of the U.S. Army and its technological and financial superiority. Number 5. Navy SEAL Team 6, USA If you ever wonder why the U.S. doesn't have a universal healthcare system, just check their army. Undoubtedly, the U.S. is the strongest military force in the world and it's home to one of the deadliest, most efficient special military units that's ever operated on Earth. Navy SEAL Team 6, known as the U.S. Naval Special Warfare Development Group, they are primarily tasked with counter-terrorism and unconventional warfare operations. Naturally, to become a part of this elite group, you need to be more than a regular U.S. soldier. It may help if you're more than a regular human as well, since it seems their training program is designed to crush even Superman's spirit. 
candidates start with basic physical training. This includes intense strength building exercises, along with breathtaking cardio. To make the training even more thrilling, the instructors will throw any candidate in a pool of water with their hands tied behind their back. There, the trainees must complete a series of tasks only with their teeth. Moreover, they will be taught how to tie and untie several knots underwater without giving them a chance to breathe in between. If that's not brutal enough for you, wait until week four. This is when candidates enter Hell Week. These are five days and nights of non-stop training with only four hours of sleep over the entire period. Along with the exhausting training, Recruiters must battle their sleep deprivation and endure exercises such as running with a boat on their heads, crawling through thick mud and lifting 300 pound logs. If that's not fun enough, they will even have the chance to surf. Oh, wait, they actually go through surf torture. But that's an exercise when you lay down right where the waves crash into the beach to experience the sensation of struggling against giant waves in the open sea. Delightful. Unsurprisingly, after week four, about 80% of candidates drop out. And it seems they made the right choice. As after that, recruits will be submitted to much harsher exercises, such as torture, survival, and even soaking in ice-cold water. Toward the end of their training, recruits are taken to Alaska, where they have to spend eight minutes in the ice-covered water. That's roughly one minute before hypothermia kicks in, about two minutes before they lose a limb, and about four minutes before they die. Knowing this, it's unsurprising that more SEALs die annually during training than in operations. Of course, if you finish that training, you're obviously from Krypton, and nothing can stand in your way. So why this special unit even uses M4A1 carbines, HK416s, and 6 or P226 pistols is truly a mystery. Jokes aside, SEAL Team 6 is often used for critical counter-terrorist situations, where actions should be taken swiftly and deadly. Some of the most famous operations attributed to SEAL Team 6 include the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan, in 2011, and the rescue of Captain Richard Phillips from Somali pirates in 2009. Can you imagine that these superhumans are not even in the top three of the most formidable special forces in the entire world? Ancestors proud. If there is a VIP lounge in Valhalla, it's probably reserved for these guys. The unit is specialized in conducting maritime operations, including reconnaissance, sabotage, and counterterrorism. To be most effective, they undergo one truly intensive physical and mental training from the first moment they apply for the job. For six months, they are submitted to treatment that, if seen by a European court for human rights judge, will certainly cause them a heart attack. Their training includes intense long-distance running, marching, and swimming. In addition, recruits must be able to put on their gear underwater, naturally forcing them to keep their breath for nearly two minutes. As a result, some candidates black out during this training session. If you think that stuff, don't be silly. That's just week one. This is the weeding out process, and usually only 10% of candidates go forward. For the 20 or so people left, the fun continues with hypothermia resistance training in ice cold water, severe survival training, and diving training. The selected few will continue with more vigorous specialized exercises like bomb diffusion, spec and black ops training, and others. Naturally, much of the information about this elite team is kept secret.
500. Still, they most commonly use the MP5 submachine gun, Sig Sauer P226 pistol, and the HK416 assault rifle. The Frontman Corps has participated in a number of international operations, including serving as part of the International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan and contributing to anti-piracy efforts off the coast of Somalia. Can you imagine what awaits if these guys are outside the top three? Number three, GIGN, France. The Groupe d'Intervention de la Gendarmerie Nationale, GIGN, is a special operations force within the French Gendarmerie. The unit comprises approximately 400 highly trained personnel specializing in counterterrorism, hostage rescue, and other high risk operations. As you can imagine, those are not the typical French stereotype of smoking cigarettes and handling a baguette. Much more common. HK416 assault rifle, Sig Sauer P226 pistol, or the FR F2 sniper rifle. To get there, though, these elite units go through one truly soul crushing recruitment and training process. For starters, candidates must swim 50 meters with their hands and feet tied up. The task was designed to weed out the weak at the start, and unsurprisingly, about 50% of all candidates actually need saving. Next is the five mile run with a 44 pound backpack. Those who finish in the time frame continue the torture with some high demanding physical and mental challenges, like walking on a 65 foot high unstable plank while being submitted to cross examination by two drill instructors. That's nothing though compared to the trust shot. In this exercise, the trainee is dressed in body armor and hangs a clay disc from their neck right in front of their chest. The kicker is that another candidate must shoot the disc. Somehow, this should promote trust. However, I'm not sure how you can trust a man who shoots you in the chest. About 90% of the remaining candidates refuse to take part in this challenge. So obviously the GIGN are looking for the most insane people to join their ranks. As you can imagine, they are not tasked with protecting Macron from protesters. Some of their most famous operations include rescuing passengers on Air France Flight 8969 in 1994, the return of French hostages in Yemen in 2010, and the capture of terrorists responsible for the 2015 Charlie Hebdo shooting. With a portfolio like this, it's hard to believe there are special forces more badass than this one, but of course there is. Number 2. Delta Force. might know something about this special military unit. Still, in real life, they are far better than you ever were. And you might even think that they're using some cheat codes. They're not. The Delta Force team is the most elite US special military unit, and as such, they are often tasked with the impossible. They operate in high secrecy and little is known about their regiments and day-to-day -day training. Still, the unit comprises roughly 1,000 personnel and goes through one of the most challenging selections you can imagine. First and foremost, to qualify as a candidate, you must have been in an active war and participated in a battle. Fortunately for most US soldiers, America wasn't the most peaceful country in the past two decades. So eligibility is not such a high problem. Getting through the first stage, however, is. To become part of this specialized unit, you need to be an expert in demolition, firearms, and navigation. Still, over the training course, these skills will be enhanced significantly. While the exercises themselves are kept top secret, they are designed to break a person's spirit and will to live. Some sources claim that candidates are left to sleep as little as three to four hours a night night for weeks, while at the same time pushed beyond their limit with vigorous physical and endurance training. Only about 5% of all candidates finish this nightmare of training. As you can imagine, such a secretive special force is not often in the headlines. Still, they are well known for their role in taking over Panama in 1989 after a hostage situation. 
Moreover, they were tasked with capturing Saddam Hussein in 2003 and were involved in the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound in Pakistan, though the final shot was not theirs. SEAL Team 6 stole the thunder. There are many mysteries about Delta Force, but the only one I can think of right now is who can be better than these guys. Number 1. SAS UK When discussing badass British operatives, James Bond without a doubt comes to mind. However, this fictional character is related to their secret agency, MI6, and compared to the SAS, those guys are merely newbies. When it comes to brute force, the British rely on their special air service, better known as the SAS unit. This is the British special forces responsible for conducting various operations, including counterterrorism, direct action, reconnaissance, and hostage rescue. The SAS is comprised of four regiments, each with a number of operational squadrons. The exact number of personnel within the SAS is classified, but it's estimated to be around 400 to 500 personnel. Naturally, to be part of the best military unit on the planet, you must be more than a mere human. Actually, I'm not sure that even demigods are allowed. Those that can finish the SAS training course must be nothing less than gods. After all, their main battlefield task is to inflict as much damage as possible within the shortest time behind enemy lines without any losses. This ambitious goal forces trainees to go through excruciating physical and mental training. While most elite squads have a hell week to weed out the unfit candidates, the SAS has a five month long hell training. It includes six marathons in just five days. And and since that's obviously not hard enough, candidates must wear 55 pounds of bricks in their backpacks throughout all marathons. Naturally, these marathons are not on the streets and countryside, but in the mountains of the west and north. This selection is so demanding that there have been cases of candidates dying from exhaustion. Others have been documented breaking mentally and being admitted to mental institutions, while others start at hallucinating from exhaustion and heat. If they get through this insane first step, the next part takes place in the Indian jungles, where they are left alone to survive several days. Naturally, about 95% of the candidates are gone before the actual training starts. The training itself is pretty standard. Sleep deprivation and hypothermia resistance, accompanied by tactics, weapon training, and of course, hand to hand combat. To graduate from this nightmarish hell, you must pass one final test, a manhunt. Trainees are given just a compass, a roughly sketched map, and their clothes, and dropped somewhere in the wild. They have to get to a predetermined exact point within a time frame. And since that's child's play, the full SAS force will be hunting them down. Naturally, no one has ever managed to finish this task, and trainees always end up captured. That's part of the training, as they are put through the most demanding of all tests, interrogation resistance. Recruits are put through all sorts of human rights violations, like waterboarding, electric shock torture, white noise torture, and others. They are held in such conditions without food for about a week. As you can imagine, only about 1% of all who enter this torture chamber manage to finish the training. Most recruitment campaigns end without new SAS operatives, as all candidates fail to complete the interrogation resistance training. With such a recruitment process, it's no wonder that most SAS operations end up with the unit eliminating 20 to 30 times bigger armies without losing a single operative. The SAS has been involved in a number of high-profile operations, including the Iranian Embassy siege in London in 1980, the Gulf War in 1991, and the war in Afghanistan. One of the SAS's most famous operations was Operation Nimrod in 1980, which involved the rescue of hostages 